I would like now to introduce you uh, to our next speaker, Mr. Itzhak Ackerman. Itzhak is the Homeland Security Program Manager at the Standard Institute of Israel for the last nine years. He is, an a is active in the national and international standardization fields of emergency management and social security. Itzhak is a member of the ISO committee that developed the business continuity management system standard. And he was the technical manager of the national committee which developed the national management system standard or on organizational resilience. Itzhak has vast experience in the development of risk based man management system standard and has uh, research, uh, research the difference between them. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to speak in front of this distinguished crowd. I really enjoyed about the BS because I really have a lot of respect for British uh, standards. They do a good job. Now what I'm going to speak about is uh, organizational preparedness management system standards. Is it that simple? From the uh, talk we heard before, it seemed very straightforward, very simple. But I will try and give some examples here and bring us down to the ground level, the reality. <coughs> but before I start, I would like to uh, introduce Standards Institute of Israel. Maybe not everyone re aware, but it's the legal, it's a statutory organization for developing Israel standards. We are the SII is also the official representative or it, the representative of Israel at ISO, IEC, SEN, and SENELEC. SII is not only involved in development of Israeli standards and facilitating the international standard development from Israel, but we also have testing, certification of products, man and management systems. Uh, management system standards are tools for the management to effectively manage the organization. The concept of management system standards started with quality management. And we, as we saw before, it also went into uh, environmental management and occupational health and safety management. So I, lucky I didn't put the numbers here because instead of uh, 18,001, I had to put a different number. Now, when talking about preparedness standards, I feel that the catalyst for them was the uh, unfortunate 9-11 terrorist attack on U.S. soil. One of the recommendations of the 9-11 Commission report that was uh, prepared after this terrorist attack and in light of it, and which was completed July 2004, was that they would endorse the use of an American national standards, uh, ANSI standard recommended, and they had urged the Department of Homeland Security to promote its adoption. And this is a very interesting statement. Now, the standard they were addressing was the NFPA 16000, which was a standard on disaster emergency management and continuity programs. This standard was developed by the, national, um, the American National Fire Protection Association, and it's not... It, it's, very interesting, but it's not surprising why it was developed by the fire department or fire-associated organization. Be that's because in the United States, the fire department has the uh, responsibility of managing disasters. So when you have a disaster, in Israel it's the police department, in the States it's the fire department. Now this publication is an average uh, revised every four years. The latest edition is the 2013 edition. Now, the International Standards Organization, ISO, didn't stand by, but they also decided to contribute, and they held an international workshop agreement. That's another deliverable that wasn't mentioned, but that's another deliverable given by the International Standards Organization. It's called an IWA. In 2000, April 2006, in Florence, uh, Italy. You might even recognize, you can see that, you'll see some people from BSI there. Um, this is a product delivered by consensus of experts that gather together for a one-shot, well, usually it's one-shot event, a workshop agreement. Now, the purpose of this workshop 
was we will go, the purpose of the meeting will be to reach an international workshop agreement to be published by ISO for emergency preparedness and operational continuity. Now, I outline two things, reach an international workshop agreement, which isn't all that simple, and it's for emergency preparedness and or operational continuity. Now, uh, what was the outcome of this? But even before that, what is a preparedness uh, standard, or yet, or better yet, what is preparedness? I mean, we were looking, we we're talking about the uh, unambiguity of a standard language, but here they used, and it's continually used in the preparedness, but what does that mean? Now, uh, just to close the story about the IWA, they didn't reach any conclusion, but what did become of it, that they developed, they formed, uh, and established a new technical committee, or they revised the technical committee in ISO 223, called uh, Societal Security. Now, what happened elsewhere? I mean, people weren't sitting there and waiting for everything to happen, so in ISO we had the t what we just mentioned, the societal security. We also had uh, seen piracy starting to become more uh, uh, apparent. So, TC8, Ship and Marines Technology, decided to protect uh, the uh, supply chain, which is also very important. So you have to prepare organizations to protect for the supply chain. And see, we saw the NFPA. UK, they were working on information technology of 27,001, which started out as the 9977, and business continuity. And in Israel, there was an effort to develop a security and continuity standard, which was published also in 2007. Now, how do we define the term? Let's go back to preparedness, because everything I said has what to do with preparedness. Now, this chart that we see here was something that was the idea behind the way the Israeli Technical Committee, National Technical, saw handling risk or handling an event, and it starts with prevention, mitigation, deterrence. If the risk does happen to turn into an event, then we have to respond, mutual aid, recovery, and continuity. Now, how does preparedness fit in here? If we are looking at a risk-based approach, then we'd see we have to, preparedness would be to prevent the risk of turning into something bigger or turning it into an opportunity. Now, if we look at this, the consequence, then what we have to do is look at the incident and the consequence of the incident. So what would preparedness be then? Preparedness would be to have a better, to be prepared to respond and recover. So these are two different, now it might be look like splitting hairs, but basically this is a very deep philosophical way of looking things, and as we sort of heard before, it also has different markets. So uh, this becomes an issue, and where it's played out is not only in the marketplace, but also in the standards developing organizations. Now, one of the first pr products of TC uh, 2 to 3 societal security was a pass, which was mentioned before, because pass 22399. And this <coughs> was called the Guidelines for Incident Preparedness and Operational Continuity. And what we see here in the graph is that we see that if we have a system in place that has us prepared, so we can mitigate or lessen the impact and shorten the time for recovery. But then again, here we can also see what is preparedness. Is it to respond or maybe to be better prepared and maybe even prevent the incident? So even when looking at this, we see that we can still have the, un the ambiguity of what is preparedness mean. Uh, and not only that, that this was a lot even names, the name of what I said before, preparedness and operational continuity, incident preparedness and operation con con continuity can be changed by security and business continuity. But these terms were not used here, and it wasn't, it wasn't just by chance. 
Now, if we look and we, I, I, I sat down and I sort of divided it into different uh, groups, concepts, whatever. So number one, we can look at what is the focus of a management system standards that were developed since then, if we're talking about the ship and marine, the supply chain. So we have supply chain, which means you take the organization and you just look at the supply chain. Or you can just look at the IT. Or you can look at the whole organ organization across the border. And we can also look at the disciplines. I mean, I'll just focus in on what we were talking about preparedness, which is security, business continuity, we can argue about, but it is plugged in there as preparedness. Or you can look at risk. And the risk can also be uh, overarching, not specif specific risk for, let's say, environmental. Now they're talking about quality, but we're talking about overarching, integral risk of an organization. So what we see here is, is things are just getting out of hand here. And uh, now, if we look, now we're going to go in and see that I've identified five different technical committees within ISO that were addressing preparedness in an organization. It's not like in ISO when you look at quality, you have one technical committee that is integrating all the views and coming up with consensus here, different groups with different concepts, different focus, went out and established their own technical committees. So the first one will be in the uh, IT security techniques, where we have the whole family of 27,001, oh, 27,000, which is uh, security management, uh, IT secu uh, managed security management. You have the uh, supply chain security, which later became also organ resilience of the supply chain. Again, this is something that, as time goes on, more terms, better developed, and there's cross-pollination. You have societal security, which came out with a term of organization resilience, which is the, uh, uh, is the next generation of security and operational uh, continuity. And, of course, you have the business continuity management. And in TC224, you have... Water. They de they're developing a standard for uh, managing crisis of a water facility. And then you have somebody else that just popped up as TC2 fraud and countermeasures and controls. Now at the national level or uh, regional level, you have ASIS, which is the Association of Security Industry Society in the States, or they consider them international, that they are getting involved in uh, business continuity, organization resilience, uh, management of security, private security companies, etc. You have BSI, which we've heard about and we've mentioned, and we have Standard Institute of Israel, which developed an organizational resilience standard. Now, if we take a summary until now, we have the concepts which preparedness could be either risk oriented or consequence, consequence oriented. You have the disciplines, either an umbrella, if you want to focus on business continuity or you want to speak about security, and you have the focus. Is it an organizational level? Are you focusing on a specific part of the organization, like the IT, or the supply chain? Now, what they focus, I mean, it's again, it's, 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 a, it's a philosophical question, because some people say if the organization loses information, then the organization ceases to exist, so we have to focus everything on the, on the information. Supply chain, they will say that Supply chain is everywhere. Every organization has a supply chain. And then, of course, then you can see people look at the organization taking the model of uh, quality or uh, environmental protection or management, that they look that it doesn't matter a specific part of the organization, but it's cross-organization. And, and then what happens since until today, then we have different types of uh, management system standards types. We have security management, we have business continuity management systems, we have organization resilience management. So looking at it, it's not that simple. Now, if I'm going to draw a map and show what we have, products that are out there, then we have the security, uh, security management systems. I can focus in on two. We spoke about the focuses, principles, et cetera. So we have two uh, 
security, uh, 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 IT security management system elements. One of them is the management system, which I personally think it's also a risk-based and also a consequence-based. It doesn't just focus on security, but it also looks at recovery and continuity of an IT system. So it has the business continuity mixed into it, but that didn't make a difference because then that same committee came up with a 27,031, which is uh, readiness for business continuity. You know, they had to put in a standard that will focus in on business continuity. And there again, it's also very wide, very broad. Then we have crisis management with water utility. Water utilities decided that they want to develop a specific management system for managing a water crisis at water utility, and that is a clear business continuity management sort of system, and that was initiated by Israel. So I, now we have the ISO 22301, which came up with the business continuity management system, which is based on the British standard. And they had an organizational resilience management system, which because of interaction between the com committees was sort of degraded, and now they want to come up with some overarching guidance in organizational management uh, or organizational resilience management. Then, of course, we have the security of the supply chain, but then they had to come up with some kind of organizational resilience. So they came up with 28,002, which is resilience of the supply chain. And then a late runner, 34,001, which is still in the process, and they call themselves security management system, which is very confusing, but they mean due to fraud. But that you have to read the standard just by the name. So... Recently, ISO gathered the chairs of committees working on preparedness management system standards. And it seems that there's minimal coordination, leaving concept of preparedness management system standards very ambiguous, which is antithesis for standardization. And as a consultant once voiced his concern on a different sense, that they, and I was heard here, consultant once voiced the concern to what a standard would do to his livelihood. He was concerned that he'd lose it. But after we see this, I think that makes it much broader for more consultants to help the confused. Um, so I'm glad that you enjoyed it. That concludes my, but before I go to the question slide, I just would like to, to the Israelis here, that uh, SII is the platform for number one, getting involved and maybe clearing up some of these ambiguities or adding to them. It depends on the interest of the person participating. We have the facility to uh, get involved in national standardization or it's a platform to getting involved in the international standard organization and then you can meet colleagues such as BS and others around the table at equal level and you can influence international standardization as voluntary standards, but they sure make things much more simple. Just think, if you had no standards in the video world, every TV that came up would need a specific communication with a specific camera, we'd be back in the cave. So that concludes my presentation. Any questions? No, but from the counter-terrorist uh, um, directorate we did. But aren't you in here that there is this uh, all this uh, you know, different standards because of this fight, and I'm confused, and I'm a professional. Now think about the customer there in the, in the, in the, in the industry or in the field or somewhere that they need to understand what, uh, what standard to, to, to be certified to So I'm glad you understood the point of this presentation is to show that 
uh, as I look at the quality management standards development, you got everyone around the same table and you came to some kind of consensus. When you look at preparedness, you don't have that. Every group that had an interest decided to build up his group and go out to market. That's how come you don't see any of the preparedness standards, except for the 27,001, as one of the best sellers. That was my point. Thank you.